One of the biggest days for Halo and Xbox is right around the corner, and I think this will greatly showcase what the future of Halo Infinite is going to be, and that is June 11th with the Xbox Bethesda Showcase. Announced back on March 8th, saying join us for a Starfield Direct following the Xbox Games Showcase on Sunday, June 11th. Of course, Starfield's getting its own thing because it's probably the biggest game release for Xbox this coming year. But we're gonna get an entire Xbox presentation before the Starfield section, so it makes me think, are they gonna be making room for a Halo presentation within this event? Last year's Xbox Bethesda Showcase, we literally got nothing on the side of Halo because they were so far behind when it comes to content and development of the game, they just didn't have time to set aside to make a presentation. I mean, what was there really for 343 to showcase? Because they just had season two start in May, then a month later was the Xbox Bethesda Showcase. And I think by that time they already announced that season two was going to originally last until November, another six months. So there really wasn't anything to really get too hyped about. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a small US-based company that provides a far more tasty, fulfilling, and more importantly, healthier option than your typical ramen brands. In less than three minutes, one packet of Vite Ramen gives you more food than the leading ramen brands, 25% of your daily micronutrients, up to 30 grams of protein, 7 grams of dietary fiber, and most importantly to me, 50% less sodium to help you live a healthier lifestyle. Where the leading brand is really just salt and carbs. Vite Ramen also has vegan plant-based versions as well. My favorite is the Sichuan Chili, as it actually packs a punch of heat along with a filling bowl of ramen. I mean, look at me. Isn't that the face of satisfaction right there? And why give your money to the corporate overlords We can help out a small business? So check out the link in the pinned comment and also in the description of this video to give Vite Ramen a look over. And thank you very much, Vite Ramen, for sponsoring this video. But I feel this year that is perfectly scheduled for Xbox and Halo to really showcase the game and what's gonna be coming around the corner for it. Honestly, I feel like this might be one of the few times Xbox really has a chance to get people excited about Halo to tell you why you should jump in and play this this game again. So what could we see for this presentation? Well, I think we're gonna see a lot of season four content as well as maybe Tatanka. Before we get into it, I just have to ask if you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. It is the best way to help out the video and channel within the all famous YouTube algorithm. And if you're new to the channel, I want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, because I believe about 78% of you are not subscribed to the channel. Well, you'll know what to do. So the way we're gonna break down this video, we're gonna be talking about the content you can play within season four of Halo Infinite. We're gonna be basing this off of the leaks and rumors, which have also been very credible essentially the worst kept secrets in gaming right now at the moment. We're also going to be covering customization, what's going to be coming in with season four, as well as potentially cross core content. And then we're actually going to be talking about the content going into the game, like maps, equipment, weapons, and things like that. And lastly, we're going to be talking about Tatanka. It's one of the big things I think it's going to be showcased within this Xbox, but there's a showcase for the Halo stuff is going to be the new content you can play as in what you can be able to do in the game. That one thing is going to be infection. I think this is going to be the major theme of season four. We've seen leaks about infection coming to Halo Infinite in season four for months now. We covered this image that was leaked out by Halo.API to showcase what looks to be infection, but more of an AI infection looking very familiar to say Eratus that's currently involved with the story of Halo Infinite. And I do believe that this will tie into the narrative event in some capacity as well. So it's going to be a whole thing. It's not just going to be like infection added into Halo. It's going to be an event. There's going to be story elements tied to it as well. But this isn't going to be your typical like zombies, like flood infected kind of theme like we've seen previously from 343. This is going to be much more of an AI infected kind of thing. We've seen leaked images go online. I can't really show them because they've been taken down. But 343 has made the return of infection an entire deal. It's a big deal. Another classic mode I feel like I'm going to receive return within season four is the action sack. And it's going to return a little bit differently. And in the communication with one of the lead multiplayer devs here on Twitter, he stated that we have a different idea for action sack, particularly when we start getting our hands on the wild stuff the community makes within Forge. We have seen Forge content out there that's crazy and really awesome and now starting to get fully integrated into the game for the match making experience. I could totally expect to see that happen with action sack return as well. We could see some classics and some new modes as well. Would this make it into the Bethesda showcase? I don't really think so. Possibly if it's like a really cool, unique looking party game experience, something that you can't really have anywhere else outside of Halo, then yeah, I could see it being showcased. 
We're also going to see PvE added into Halo Infinite. This is most likely coming within Season 4 and probably will get showcased within the Xbox Bethesda Showcase. One being the mode Extraction. We've talked about multiple times here on the channel. This was leaked out months and months ago. Essentially a PvE mode where it's a attack defend kind of situation where you take an objective from point A, bring it over to point B, defend it, and maybe do it a few times over against AI characters and you win the round essentially. We've also seen leaks and rumors of the mode Bastion, which is kind of like a King of the Hill version of a PvE mode again really great to see that come in this is desperately needed within the halo franchise and just the halo infinite experience and then lastly we've been hearing things about forge firefight which we'll get into a little bit about what that really means but the return of firefight is going to be an awesome addition to halo infinite especially with the sandbox that's in the game and the ability that people can create these insane maps and experiences with forge well I mean, I can totally see Forge Firefight being the, the potentially the best firefight we've ever seen. Next, we talk about customization here, something that's core to the experience of Halo Infinite right now, and pretty much what's keeping the lights on over at 343 is customization and utilizing the store in some kind of way. Fracture events, I don't think we're gonna see anything new when it comes to that. It's actually gonna be most likely the return of the Tenrai event, but coming back with just more customization options for your Yoroi armor set, which I would totally agree to see happen because there really isn't a whole lot of customization available when it comes to your fracture cores if you didn't pay into things. I covered this all in a previous video. That's why I don't really use Tenrai because man, it's kind of cool looking, but there really isn't much to do with it if you, unless you dropped a lot of money on that core. And this does look to be the case when you're looking within the enemy mind cinematic right here, you see a Yoroi Spartan with definitely customization we do not have right now available for the players. And I would be surprised if they just added in customization into these cutscenes that you won't eventually have I feel like 343 kind of learned a lesson previously by doing that when it comes to the blowout promotional material before the release of the game. So the return of Yo Ride does look pretty much imminent for season four, which I'm all for that. Now let's also talk about another part of customization that you guys really want to know more about, cross-core customization. 343 has been very quiet on the developments of this, and I think they might be holding off until the June event for Xbox Bethesda Showcase to showcase what they can do with cross-core customization. I mean, the last update we had was the visor update that happened way back, I believe like what, in the fall of 2022. So it's been close to six months now and we haven't really seen any changes happen with it. What I could expect to see is maybe some chest pieces, some helmet changes, maybe even some shoulder pads and stuff like that. I really do feel like 343 has made some good progress with this and they're just waiting for a big event to be able to showcase it off because this is something that people want so badly. Happens with every single one of my videos. Whenever I mention CrossCore, the views are way higher than anything else. People really want to see this and an event like the Xbox with this showcase would be a perfect time to do that. I would just say set your expectations properly. I wouldn't expect just full customization, whatever you want, put on whatever Spartan. I think we're probably, like I mentioned earlier, we'll see probably helmets be able to be CrossCore, maybe some specific types of items and attachments I could totally see happen, but not just true to the full on just cross core, put on whatever and whatever Spartan, or maybe so. It's been a long time since you've heard it, but I would just set your expectations properly and put them but lower than what you actually want. Next, let's talk about content that's gonna be adding the game, more things within the game that you can actually play around with. That being like the quantum translocator that we covered previously on the channel here months ago. And this is basically an equipment that will allow you to set a point in space on the map to where if you want to teleport back to it, you can do just that. My biggest concern with this is that there has to be some type of a buildup or cooldown to be able to use this quantum translocator. I would hate to see people just jump into the middle of a gunfight, realize they're in a bad situation, just boom, then they're out of it. Like that would be really unfair to people who played properly. That'd be a really unfair counter. So I would like to see some kind of like charge up to it where like if you want to quantum translocate, if that's the word, you have to wait like a second before activating the button to be actually be able to do it. I think we'll see the return of the Falcon with in season four. We've seen plenty of leaks about this. We've covered it again previously on the channel here. If you guys are not subscribed, then you're missing out on the Halo news here. But I think the Falcon's going to make a return within season four. We've seen actually some progress with it where when it was first leaked, it had no effects with it. The texturing was very basic. Actually, I don't think like it really had textures attached to it. And I've seen images now online that have been leaked that actually looks fully textured and pretty much ready to go. The Falcon is one of my all-time favorite vehicles, so I'm really excited to see this return. But it's not going to be your classic Falcon, where previously the Falcon was used like a machine gunner 
or it was a grenade launcher or just a transport falcon. This one looks to do all three within when one falcon, which sounds really cool, where one side is going to have a cannon, one side is going to have a turret, and you will be able to have two passengers in, all in the back of the falcon while with one driver. It's going to be really interesting to see how, say, the falcon will interact with BTB. Is it going to be a drop from a pelican or is it going to be an on map spawn? I have a feeling it will most likely be a pelican drop or a falcon that can also fly, which I don't know if that logic behind, behind that works, but maybe gameplay me mechanic wise, it probably makes a little sense. Other than that though, I think the Falcon will be returning at least this year within Halo Infinite, if not within season four. Now with new content to play around with, with new sandbox items and vehicles, you're gonna have some new maps to play around with as well. We're gonna see the maps of Scar, which is going to be most likely the renaming and the official name of the map engine that we've been talking about previously on the channel here. Guys, I can't show that because it's part of this leak stuff that's been taken down from a lot of locations online. Just look on Halo Infinite engine map you'll find some leaks about it same thing with the other map crystal caves which looks to be a bit of a mining area that's gonna be where they mine blami which is the ammunition used for the needler so it has a bit of a kind of a sci-fi alien aspect to it, which i think is gonna be really cool there have been other maps kind of leaked around here and there i can't really guarantee if they'll be in season four or whatnot but i mean it's all online you can look it up for yourself if you're really curious about it but i wouldn't be surprised if we get three maps again for season four and i think the biggest change that's been coming around with content being added in the halo infinite is Campaign AI Forge. I really do believe that's coming in with Season 4 as well, and this definitely would be showcased within the Xbox Bethesda showcase because of how much of a game changer it is. Like I talked earlier about Forge Firefight, where Forge would be able to create their own Firefight maps. You would have to have Campaign AI, well, 343 is currently working on that at the moment, and there is nav meshing already with the ability for these Forge maps. So I think it's more just being able to find a way to integrate them in the game properly for a, like a UI experience in a way. I think this would be absolutely amazing, absolute game changer to get some casual PVE experiences tied into this. I just really hope there'd be some way to kind of do some challenges as well tied to it so you can actually make some progression in the game. While we're on the topic of progression, it looks to be like career progression is coming around very soon. I haven't seen any leaks about what the time frame of career progression is looking like but we've seen leaked images of what some of the rewards and some of the ranks look like this is going to be massive for the halo community it just gives you something to go for and keep kind of building and progressing towards even when you're done with all your challenges and all your content you've wanted to unlock within the game career progression is also gonna be a great way to showcase like how much a player has played to see like how seasoned of a veteran they really are are you playing with a brand new player so you might have to take it a little bit easier with them or have they uh, been a seasoned veteran where you kind of expect to know for them to know exactly how to play Halo. Lastly, let's talk about Tatanka, the rumored Battle Royale mode that's been well rumored and leaked for over a year and a half now at this point. <laughs> Feels like the game, it's like gaming's worst kept secret right now. And from what I've seen, that most likely it could release early 2023 or early 2024. But it's also kind of seemed like development has halted when it comes to Tatanka. Very credible leaker that we've cited multiple times on the channel here. So Asia talked about how to development on Tatanka has stopped because he goes into the API of the engine to kind of figure out what 343 is kind of planning to do with the game. So reading that you might be thinking, okay, well, there is no battle royale happening. Not exactly. I think what's happening here is that we've heard the recent leaks and rumors, right? That Halo is switching over to the Unreal Engine. Now, how credible that is. I mean, it did come from Jason Schreier, which is a very credible source. And if certain affinity switched over to the Unreal Engine to develop the Tonka on, well, then they wouldn't be updating the API for Slip Space Engine now, would they? Initial reports talked about how Tonka would be a bit of a standalone experience, kind of like what we have with Warzone for Call of Duty, but still tie into the main game. But if this is the case, switching over to Unreal Engine, but then also trying to interact with the Slip Space Engine for content you bind into this, it just, to me, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So something just isn't quite lining up up there. I think what the Unreal Engine Switch is all about is for whenever they make a new Halo game. I don't really see Halo Infinite's development lasting the whole 10 year process. I mean, for for the here and now, it's all about Halo Infinite and making the best game they can out of that. And I think right now they're trying to figure out what's the long term future of Halo Infinite. And it could be switching over to the Unreal Engine just to make it easier for when you hire all these contractors that you can at least get them up and running faster than what you could with your own proprietary engine, which seemed to be a big issue when it comes to development of Halo Infinite. You've seen developers after leaving 343 come out saying it's taking at least six months to get a contractor up to speed to then just leave a year later. So I'm curious if we'll see 
Tatanka even come out for Halo Infinite. If Tatanka does release, then most likely it'd be its own standalone thing, maybe not even integrated with Halo Infinite, which would be kind of crazy. Or maybe they could pull that Call of Duty kind of thing where if you want to play traditional multiplayer, you go play Halo Infinite. If you want to play the Battle Royale and potentially like a new story or something tied to that game in the Unreal Engine, we're going to go play Tatanka. But if Tatanka was to release late 2023, it would definitely be announced within the Xbox Bethesda showcase here on June 11th. But if Xbox Xbox wants to continue with their 12 month plan when it comes to announcing things and showcasing things within their Xbox showcase. Well, Tatanka's release date fits within that 12 month time frame. And if they're going to release Tatanka within that time frame, you'd think they would announce it. Unless Tatanka's development has been delayed to past 2025, which in that case, uh, I would even be considering if this mode would even be potentially possible to be popular as we've seen a little bit of a diminishment when it comes to the popularity of Battle Royales and and the rise of extraction shooters. Don't get me wrong though, Battle Royale is still incredibly popular and still the top dog when it comes to modes to play within first person shooters. But for the here and now, we have a mode that was just added into Halo Infinite that people have been asking for over a year now at this point. If you guys wanna know more about it, check out this video right here. Thank you all for watching, catch you on the next one. Peace out.